kuweka msisitizo ni lile linalohusu kukuza na kuimarisha uhusiano na ushirikiano kati ya mataifa yetu mawili na hili ndilo jambo la msingi kama alivyosema Tanzania na Kenya sio tu majirani lakini ujirani wenyewe ni wa kindugu alisema pia kwamba ukiangalia mipaka inayozunguka Kenya mpaka wao na Tanzania ndio mkubwa kuliko mipaka ya nchi nyingine zote lakini kwenye mpaka huo wale wanaoishi mipakani wako Tanzania wako Kenya na wote ni ndugu kwa hiyo uhusiano wetu ni wa kindugu Okay I'm, I'm being challenged to speak in Kiswahili and ngumze Kiswahili leo watu wasikilize Kiswahili but <laughs> that is just one of the many memorable sound bites Linas that we have had uh, over the last couple of days and uh, um, as far as state visits go this really went well It went very well and in many senses uh, first of all it must be admitted that the relations between Tanzania and Kenya were perceived to be tense during the time of uh, the late President John Pombe Magufuli. It was considered that we were not that friendly, which is why Suluhu Hassan's state visit has gone down so, so well. And it has gone so well principally because of how she has communicated. She has come here and delivered moving speeches in very conversational fashion. You know, you'd think it's, she's speaking to you across a coffee table and to you individually as, a, as one Kenyan out of 47 million. And uh, that really worked uh, well. Kenyans have also gotten into this uh, situation where they have been wowed by her sense of dress, uh, her sense of fashion. Boys. And, and have come voice mm. and delivery. Mm -hmm. And then everybody knows the story. Here is probably one person that can be described as an accidental president uh, who has only come to office because of the death of the incumbent. And she has surprisingly yeah. moved on to stamp her authority and also put in place her identity we already seem to start to understand her style. And if I was to uh, summarize it, in my view, this is principally the Zanzibari variant of leadership in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. Because she reminds me a lot of Mze uh, Ali Hassan Mwingi, the second president of uh, Tanzania. That no drama kind of demeanor speak in a measured voice, speak in a conversational uh, voice. Don't be excited. You know, she's really the antithesis when it comes to how we yeah. do politics here in Kenya. Yeah. Uh, she's not animated, yet she delivers her, her points very, very uh, fluently. Uh, in terms of how she intends to do work, we can see all she is doing is what um, Mwenye did, which is investors come in, create jobs, create employment, pay taxes, and make your profits where, 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 when you can. It's a very, very simple economic strategy, Joe. And, 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 and Jamila, she, she looked like uh, someone who came with a very clear agenda. She mm -hmm. knew what she wanted to get um, from Kenya, laid it on the table, and mm -hmm. actually went back home with, 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 with a few things That's to, true. to present back to the, Ken to the Tanzanian uh, public. That's true, Joe. And, and, and Linus just said that uh, she became the president under very difficult circumstances. Her last act as vice president was announcing that the president had passed away. Mm. And her first act as president was to lead the country in Good mourning morning. and the burial of the late uh, Dr. John Pombe Magufuli as president. So she started at a very, uh, on a very difficult and dark cloud. But this is less than 50 days since she was, uh, she was sworn in as president. And she's already made two visits to her neighbors. Mm -hmm. She started in Uganda. And now she, she came to <coughs> Kenya for a state visit, though the Uganda was a for spe uh, specific reason for launching a project. And I think for her, she's realized that um, image and perception is important. And now she's looking outward 
in terms of trying to to look at Tanzania's interests and she's realized for, for them to be able to guard Tanzania's interests they need to look beyond Tanzania and go out and, and of course well what other place to start than with your neighbors and she came here to mend the relations <coughs> because as, as Lena had said yes there had been some tashwishi kulikuwa na tashwishi kati ya Kenya na Tanzania katika masuala ya biashara katika masuala ya mipaka we had seen what happened during the covid-19 pandemic when there were issues at the borders in terms of testing yeah kenyan uh, truck drivers were having trouble getting into tanzania <coughs> we had issues about that and then also of course there's one for for the maize one that the president was talking about there's idea that maize from tanzania had been held in kenya because it was said to have aflatoxin so for her the main reason she came and she said lengo kuu ni uhusiano and she repeated that issue of tuna undugu sisi ni wandugu na tukishirikiana hakuna mtu ambaye ataweza kututenganisha mm-hmm. and the importance of that because if you look at even the business side of it um Tanzania's exports to Kenya have increased in the past five years, but Kenya's has declined. And some of the reasons why is that Tanzania started manufacturing its own goods. Mm-hmm. And uh, also the fact that now it's, uh, the, the, the example that was being given is that Tanzania is becoming work, Nanza Kwamka, and Kenya needs to catch up and try and, and, and make sure that it closes this gap in terms of, of, our, of our exports to, to Tanzania. That's one. And another issue that we need to look at is now, again, I said optics. What does this show? The fact that Rais Amekuja, Amekaribishwa, there was a the state banquet there was an iftar mm. there was uh, she was she, she's the second president i think uh, after jaka equate to address both houses of parliament yeah. um which magufuli didn't do magufuli, during his state you know, visit in 2016, in 2016 when yeah. he came so this about optics what we saw her what how she was received is really a big deal because remember even as we as we cover it here citizen tv is watched a lot in tanzania and yeah. i was getting feedback from from yeah. tanzanians who i know they were saying this is amazing this is beautiful those things were missing i think in terms of the relationship between kenya and tanzania and this is a huge step in terms of now where this relationship is going and, and she was very particular about uh, you could see that she was deliberate about uh, um reaching out not just to the kenyan leadership but even to the kenyan people mm-hmm. and, and she mm-hmm. cited quite uh, uh, a number of specific reasons why uh, the two countries even uh, really have no option but just yeah. to, to to sort of work together uh, she was calling them i think mafundo but i am not too sure i want <laughs> to speak in kiswahili <laughs> <laughs> But the choice is yours, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yvonne, no. Yvonne, 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 that is a setup. No, no, it's, no, it's not. I mean, um, well, I have lessons at home, but I don't think I'm, I'm that, uh, I, I'm that proficient. Just started that mafundo, pilika pilika. Nita muliza bona matole. Look, everything we saw, um, you know, with uh, President Suluhu, was, I think, perhaps things that we hadn't seen. But President Suluhu has had quite a bit of diplomatic experience. If you recall, uh, during Dr. John Pombe Magufuli's reign, he didn't do too many international trips. I think he did, what, two or three during his entire time in office. And all the time he kept sending Samia Suluhu out. Um, I mean, she was here for the WTO ministerial. She did the Tokyo International Conference on African Development. She is the one who was literally the face of Tanzania abroad. Mm-hmm. And so what we were seeing today is all of the things that she has been doing but we have not had a chance to see. In fact, I recall um the last EAC um virtual summit at which now the rotational the presidency came to uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta. Remember she was sent mm-hmm. um in Pombe Magufuli's place. He was at the time swearing in some officials um, at State House in Tanzania. So she's had quite a bit of experience with laying on the charm with, you know, diplomacy. And so that is what we saw in effect here in the country over the last two days. Certainly, Kenya and Tanzania um, have a lot in case they choose to work together, which I think would be really great. I mean, we share, I think, the longest border yes. between Kenya mm-hmm. and Tanzania. Okay. Uh, we are both the two main gateways into the East African region, uh, with Dar es Salaam and Mombasa, uh, you know, providing entry to the region, to the landlocked countries, the hinterlands, uh, Rwanda and Burundi, um, and Uganda as well, um, you know, when it comes to, to those ports. And now DRC. So, and now the DRC, up. yes, that, that is 
considering coming in there. I mean, Kenya is Tanzania's fifth largest investor. In fact, our investments create jobs for about 55,000 Tanzanians. And then we also depend quite a bit on the food from Tanzania. They have large tracts of land. They're uh, doing farming on a very large scale. I mean, take a look at the onions that you know are in the country. And that's just to mention a few. So these two countries coming together um, and working together, I think at a time, particularly when we're looking towards recovery uh, post-COVID, I think it can only be a good thing. And whether we start to think about um, what this means uh, for a more robust EAC, I think that would be it. If you take a look at how we've been working with Tanzania, remember when Kenya started quoting Rwanda and Uganda for the SGR? Um, at the time, we called it the coalition of the willing to mm. the exclusion of mm. Tanzania. Mm. Uh, and then that collapsed. What did Tanzania do? They went and convinced Rwanda to use uh, the DAR SGR. Uh, and then you, uh, Uganda also <clears throat> decided to use the route for the East African crude oil pipeline uh, through Tanzania. So there was a moment when we're just working at cross purposes. And now to see all of these deals that were signed and, and, and having those come together, um, I think uh, would be a good thing uh, for the EAC, for the EAC countries, uh, and perhaps can start to then spur those conversations about having you know, some standardization, mm -hmm. movement of goods, movement of people, um, standardization when it comes to COVID testing, mm -hmm. which has been an issue with Tanzania. And you know, we can only hope that uh, what happens now going forward perhaps spurs a more stronger, robust EAC. But I think for me, the what next now is parliament. And even she said it when she addressed both houses uh, you know, of the house, the joint sitting. She said, what lies ahead now is for legislation and regulation to be put in place uh, by them there. But is, is something happening uh, at the National Assembly that perhaps we need to? Yeah. Uh, Oh, this is Saluhu in Parliament. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it sounded like yeah, my eye is on the screen to just see if we're. <laughs> no, the speaker, the speaker's been on the speaker on sounds exactly the same. Yeah, and he has been yeah. on this screen for a very long time. <laughs> for a very so, long so time. Who can tell yeah, whether so, it's today yeah, or. Absolutely. You know. yeah, yeah, forgive me. So, I mean, I think there's just quite a bit that happens now. It's now just putting the legislation in place and to see whether we take this forward. Yeah, Joe, jo, I look at it this way. Um, listening to uh, President Samia Slu Hassan's speech, both at State House on Tuesday and in the National Assembly yesterday. Um, I took note of two interesting things. Um, like, oh, OK. There's something that is happening in the, in, in the National Assembly. They're still voting, I think. Yeah, yeah, the people are still voting, and uh, the I'm distraction is coming from those who want to vote online. online yeah. <laughs> OK, all right. Anyway. Can, can you hear me? That is the most common question. I know, yeah, right? yeah. Can you hear me? So uh, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes, we can. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I was saying, listening to, to, to President Samia Sulu Hassan's speeches, both at State House on Tuesday and um, at the National Assembly yesterday, I, I, I took note of two interesting things. One, she's charting her path, so mm -hmm. to say, um, different from her predecessor, uh, the late John Pombe Magufuli. And you could see it was, do I call it charm offensive, mm -hmm. to the government of Kenya yeah. and to the people of Kenya. Right. Particularly, <coughs> you'll see scenarios where some uh, traders and business, pe business people who, who you know, ply Tanzania, Kenya routes, they tell you, they keep talking about harassment um, at the border, um, s some tariffs and everything else. And so she was basically assuring the traders that this is now a different setup altogether. And a similar assurance from President Uhuru Kenyatta for businessmen from Tanzania who have been <coughs> complaining of similar treatment from the government of Kenya. So at that level, appealing to the hearts and minds of citizens at that level. And then secondly, at the government level, that whatever you've had previously, whatever has happened previously is now being sorted out. Um, I, 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 saw, I saw President Samia talking about relations that Zimeji Pinda Pinda, you remember that? Kunyorosha, <laughs> 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, Kunyorosha, but even pinda. as Zina Jinyorosha, Sijui, Tunyorosha Uko National Assembly Kidogo Kwanza? Can I vote? 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 
we'll try and get back there when uh, we have the verdict uh, on the third uh, reading uh, stage in the National Assembly on the Constitution Amendment Bill 2020. But uh, back to the uh, President Samia Sulu Hassan's visit, um, I was talking about appealing to the hearts and minds mm -hmm. of traders and Kenyan businessmen. Yes. Um, across board, and even President Uhuru Kenyatta giving that reassurance to Tanzanian traders that things are now sorted out. And secondly, President Samia talking about past relationship, um, inferring to <laughs> what has been the friction. In fact, calling it Mahali Kulukuo Kumeji Pinda Pinda, now mm. she will Tanyorosha. So it gives you um, a, a, a sense of assurance that things will, will, will be different. And these differences are historical in nature. Mm. Um, I remember in this very same uh, platform, uh, LK gave us um, an explainer about the historical relationship between Kenya and Tanzania. Uh, maybe we can spare a minute or two for a repeat of that explainer. But even as you do that, um, it is trying to resolve the historical challenges. Maybe it will not be possible to do that instantly, but over a period of time, through small, small acts of goodwill sh can, sh can show a change of, a change of uh, heart in terms of how the two countries are, are relating. And I also took particular note of the appeal to members of parliament mm. to ensure that they enact legislations that encourage business between Kenya and Tanzania and the unity between the people in the two nations as opposed to um, dividing them further. There's a time, I remember we covered the Tanzanian parliament during President Kikwete's uh, uh, session. And that time when, when, when President Kikwete was talking about the coalition of the willing, you remember coalition mm -hmm. of the willing? Mm -hmm. Member, some members of parliament were very critical of the Kenyan government and the Kenyan parliament and the Kenyan people. And so you can imagine appealing to Kenyan people at individual level, the Kenyan government, and lastly, the Kenyan parliament. Mm -hmm. um, I would look at it as a, you know, a, a, a very a very elaborate charm offensive mm. that she had embarked on for two days that she was here. Um, Joe, jo, one second after uh, something Ashuri said about those small, small issues here and there that seem to really matter to people. Issues like the way uh, tourist operators are not allowed to to, yeah. to, to, to take their, their, to, their passengers beyond the, the Tanzanian mm. border, mm -hmm. while the Tanzanian truck drivers are allowed, the, the, the tour, tourist um, vehicle drivers are allowed to go all the way to the airport. Mm -hmm. And it's because of I think we were, were explained for here about the 1985 agreement mm. uh, that was, uh, it was a bilateral ag agreement between the two countries which identified what they're calling the tourist exchange points. Yeah. But those were actually replaced after the formation of the EAC and the reestablishment of the East African community. But for some reason, Tanzania still relies on the 1985 agreement. And also things like um, Kenyans who, uh, who, are, who, are, who are arriving in Tanzania for business are supposed to pay $100 yeah. um, uh, to acquire a temporary business visa, while Tanzanians working in Kenya acquire free work permits. Such issues, I think, yeah. are the ones that people want. And by the out. way, on, yes. on the permits issue, mm -hmm. um, in fact, the the, the the charges were once three thousand US dollars, yes. and then they were cut down by half to a thousand five hundred US dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile. In Kenya and Uganda, Tanzanians can come and work. They would get a permit, yeah. but don't have to pay any exactly. fee. Exactly. So those anything. are just some of the small little issues. No. That, uh, those are the ones that forth. matter, Joe. They because do. when when these are discussed, I think in that level, uh, for ground, what was happening mm -hmm. in a different. So there needs to be a way to make sure that what has been agreed at that level, in a shukachini na afikia paka those people, and it's implemented. Because once these things are implemented, can you imagine not having to pay anything uh, to get the work permit? Can you imagine the truck driver, the, the tourist vehicle drivers being allowed? to just feel like uh, we're getting our where they need to go. Those things really, really matter on the ground. And despite what is being said up here, we need to see it happening. Na, na swala la COVID. Swala, swala la COVID. Kuna mabadi, 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 Waangalia remedi remedi za ambazo tunaambua zitatusaidia kwa upana wake kitaalamu kabisa halafu watushauri kiserikali. Hatuwezi kujitenga kama kisiwa na hatuwezi kupokea neno letu bila kufanya utafiti wa kwetu. Tuwe na zetu ili tuwe na msimamo maalum unaoeleweka. Yes. That is what she had said.
that she was undying a kamati. And then, of course, we don't know what that kamati has done so far because we didn't hear about any terms of reference or anything like that. But what we saw was uh, travel advisories were issued um, in, 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 in yeah. Tanzania about anyone coming into the country. They need to have a negative uh, COVID-19 test. And then they banned flights from India. These are things we had not seen before during um, yeah. uh, President uh, John Paul Magufuli's and, time. And I think we saw her saying that. And, and even and yesterday. Saying something about that in Parliament. Oh, she spoke, in, I think, but, about but the border. Yeah. She did, yeah. She said whatever those people come up with, the bottom line is mm. that, you know, they are not an island. Mm. They will still have to find measures. Right. Which, which is oh, a oh, huge oh, departure oh. from Hakuna Corona yeah. to, yes, this Corona now. We will deal with it, but we cannot deal with it in isolation, yeah. but yeah. in conjunction with our neighbors. You remember the Kenyan outcry last year was, mm. you're doing whatever you're doing here to contain the spread, but if the neighboring countries are not doing a similar job, yeah. then your efforts here uh, will amount to nothing. In fact, there's a sound bite, I think. say that. Okay, um, okay. In, in Linus, please. Yeah. Number Kusema. Sema, Sema Linus. Sema, but. Zungumza uskike kakakakusa. Na uzungumza kwa kiswaili, kwa kiswaili, nita sema kwa kiswaili, but on this issue of uh, restoration of ties, I think it'll be misleading of Kenyans to expect an overnight change, mm -hmm. which is, there, there's this mood of everything has changed. Because you need to understand, and we need to understand as Kenyans, that this is typically how we've related with Tanzania mm. throughout our years of independence. Yeah. We blow hot, hot and, and cold. cold. Yes. We show all the signs of a recovering, broken, romantic relationship. So we, nobody wants to walk away. You can't go away, but uh, you come back. It's, it's sort of a bit of an abusive uh, relationship in some aspects. We are going to live this way because what we are celebrating right now is a change at the, at top. the top. Magufuli is out, and in comes um, uh, Sulu. Mama Suluhu. Yes, Sulu. And we all think something has changed. Remember, the top runs an entire system. Mm -hmm. And a system, I would want to say, having observed uh, Tanzanian uh, public service and politics for a, for a while, a system that is quite deep. Um, yeah and steeped in tradition, very strong principles on how their country runs and all that. So this excitement of this overnight, mm. that, that there'll be this overnight change, is actually uh, misplaced. And I want to use coronavirus as an example. Mm -hmm. She said all the right things, and she's been saying all these right things uh, on coronavirus. But quite honestly, I think Suluhu Hassan is doing a bit of managing our expectations. Oh. She came here, wore a mask nicely, yeah. all the days, except during her speeches. What did she do the first time she landed in Tanzania? Mask she off. walked down the stairs with no, no mask. mask. But even when she was coming, um, when she was boarding the flight to come yes. to Nairobi, no mask. Yes, that should tell you in very small ways yeah. that Tanzanians have their principles and they follow and, them. And Lina, there was sorry something to interrupt she you, said. But did you realize that even during that speech, yes. she said all these things, then she said, Kwa kuli, wetu. Kulingana na hali yao yes. na mtazamo. Yes. There was something yes. that said, something there. we'll do this thing, but our a, way. we'll do it our way. Yeah. Yes. And our way is where we should underline as Kenyans mm. that even all these ties that we're talking of uh, improvement of uh, diplomatic ties, remember they'll also put the rules on the table. Rules yeah. of engagement mm. will, be, yeah. will be put on the table. So it's not the usual Kenyan way of fungua get to Mefika. No, it's not. <laughs> they, there'll, be, there'll be a certain way of, of, of doing, na, na, uh, uh, doing things. And she likes saying vigez of imekidhi. Mm, whatever that means. Of the in the <laughs> the of the so <laughs> they, they, they are going to be procedural. And I just want to hear um, uh, from uh, Robert if we can go to uh, the issue of number seven. Yeah. Like in Ipia Kuna Moja Mbao. Unaendelea mazungumzo yako karibu kumalizika. Tuta nitumie lugha ya mheshimiwa rais tutaweka kidole hivi karibuni. Lakini pia na mwingine tuko kwenye mazungumzo kumaliza. That is, that is also just an indication of uh, how they'll do it. It will be procedural. It's not 
uh, it's not a free for all. It will be procedural. They'll follow certain uh, procedures in making sure um, we get back on track. Let's remember what Magufuli had done for six years is to restore a very nationalistic mm -hmm. kind of approach to mm -hmm. uh, national affairs in Tanzania. They were inward looking. It's Tanzania first, basically. Remember what Magufuli did with uh, mining companies. Yeah. What he did with uh, uh, basically trade and saying, look, don't show changes. Don't show changes on mining. These are our, 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 our minerals, and we are going to benefit uh, fr from them in a way. And let's not forget some of those policies that are inward looking yeah. were very, very popular among the rank and file of the Tanzanian population. So, bado lazima tukuja pole pole. Hatua kwa hatua. Hatua kwa hatua. I also wanted to just add to, to something um, uh, Alina has said. Um, let's not forget that Tanzania is also a member of a much bigger uh, economic block, that is the of SADC, course, Sabah, yes. um, which has eight countries. Yes, yes. Um, and, and I think there's also been. You know, in our relations with Tanzania, you hear a lot of Kenyans saying, but you know, they're still in the Ujama that mm. was, you know, put in that place. I think um, we need to look at Tanzania and be very cautious. I mean, even when we're relating together, remember there's also the sibling rivalry. And Tanzania is no pushover when it comes to their politics. Remember, they've got a lot going for them. For instance, they have a more stable political environment. They're not subject to the upheavals we have seen, for example, in Kenya from you know one election cycle to the next. And it is that stable political environment that gives them some great economic potential. They're able to grow at their pace um, you know, in the manner in which they planned. Uh, Tanzania also has some of the largest natural resources in East Africa, uh, you know, vast uh, mineral resources, natural gas resources, which they're already starting to exploit. They have a long coastline. They have multiple ports uh, with, uh, you know, regional uh, transit uh, points for that. Fertile land, like we said, you know, in the beginning with large tracts of land, they're doing some serious agriculture. So there's, there's quite a bit that is happening in Tanzania, um, you know, that, that, that favors them, you know, in that respect. And also with the SADC. So it's, it's you know, Sarek, it's, it's not going to be, uh, you know, an automatic shift towards the EAC and towards Kenya and to say, you know, this is where we're going. Um, but I think Tanzania is no pushover when it comes to uh, economic that, that Kenya needs to watch out for. And, and, and she seemed to push that point a lot. Yeah. Uh, because in her speech at the Serena and her speech in Parliament, she reminded us we are number five mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, investment. Trade, trading yeah. partner right. and invest, investment. Mm -hmm. uh, because Tanzania has a few choices, a number of choices. And uh, we cannot overlook the, the pipeline that they're doing with uh, yeah. Uganda. Mm -hmm. It was deliberately done to bypass uh, yes. Kenya. So in, you, you're totally right. We cannot overlook some of their strengths, and especially the economic options they have had, and which they exercise even as they come to the table in negotiations with Kenya. And, and, and we are also dealing with um, some really deep-seated um, uh, historical mm. attitude mm. questions. I mean, we just, both ways, yeah. there is just uh, um, an attitude question. I mean, the way Kenyans generally look at Tanzanians and, 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 the, and the vice versa. Person. And those things have real implications on how people then treat Relate each other. Because at the end ground. of the day, the, there will be all these conversations up here. But now, when you get to where people interact at the, the level of, of business to business, the level where someone actually now goes to an office to get something done, there's just a whole dynamic down there that is quite different from mm. what, what we see and up here. So, kasumba, so, so obviously, uh, um, <laughs> no, I don't know whether it is Kasumba, but... Uh, <laughs> Stereotypes. Yeah, <laughs> true. yeah but what we, we are different. But, but we will have... Uh, <laughs> I, I do not know what, what that uh, <laughs> means in this context. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but I think what is... Uh, Really, the point the point I am I'm making here, which is really critical, is now that all these things have, have been said, 
let's get to the ground yeah. and see how the implementation goes. Mm. Let someone try crossing the border with you know a lorry full of whatever mm. it is, and and let's see how that process works. Now let someone come with a COVID certificate from this side, try crossing the border, and the vice versa. I think that is where the rubber meets the road, as it were. That all these beautiful speeches are done now. Let's see whether those baby steps are actually being made now to sort of uh, amend what is what 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 has clearly been uh, broken for for some time. And 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 not to forget that uh, even the Magufuli presidency started with those peacocks. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, Their cousins away, are away away from the peacock diplomacy. I look at it this way. Um, it's a symbiotic relationship. Um, Kenya, Tanzania have historical ties that despite the differences and the quarrels and the friction every so often, there are things that you cannot run away from. I mean, there are people who live across the borders and they're the same people, so to say. Trade issues are the same there. So I mean, there are things that we will not be able to run away from as Kenyans and as Tanzanians. But what I found interesting is that there is an acknowledgement or there was an acknowledgement by the two presidents that even when there will be issues, that there ought to be better ways of dealing with the problems. Um, uh, I, I had the president, uh, the two presidents talk about a team that should be engaging and meeting mm -hmm. regularly to iron out any differences that emerge instead of waiting for them to you know, so escalate bad, yeah. and get to a point where, I mean, you see almost a diplomatic stalemate, um, which I think is a good thing. But now, the test of the pudding is in the eating. Uh, oh. Oh. From, from Kusema to now Kutenda. Kutenda. Yeah. 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 Yeah